So now we're on to lesson three. We're actually going to get some actual monitoring done. The first thing we're going to do is actually monitor fog light itself. This is important because it's going to let you know if there's any problems with fog light as you built the machine out. I'm going to go ahead and go to my insta my installation folder here. Let's see. Now I went on to Quest website and downloaded the fog light cartridge infrastructure management OS cartridges. Let me zoom in on that name there for you. You can get those right off at the support.quest.com. I'm going to explore in, go to cartridges, just kind of dig through. Now we installed fog light onto Red Hat 5.5. So let's go ahead and find Linux. If we dig through, let's go view details, let's pan this over. You can see some of the operating systems supported by what they call the legacy OS cartridges. Now the word legacy is kind of a misnomer because they haven't fully replaced these yet. But there is replacements on the way for these cartridges. Newer versions are available. Those versions are not out though, and many are still missing features. So we still use a mixture of these legacy OS cartridges and what they call the infrastructure cartridge. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Linux 2.6. Copy. We'll just create something called a new folder called cartridges. Then I'm going to make another folder called deployed. So we can just keep track of which ones we deployed and which ones we haven't. We might just expand other ones later, just for the fun. So it's about 30 megs. We're just going to go in here. We're going to shoot on down to inventory, install cartridge, browse, my documents, cartridges, deployed, OS cartridge, hit OK, and install cartridge. Make sure enable on install is done. There's really no reason not to. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. This will take a few minutes for actually to apply. It didn't take quite as long as I was expecting. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Over in the top right, you'll notice a small notification window. This is not going to go away until you do something about it. One of the things I've noticed is this pops up on other Foglight administrator screens and can really annoy them. Make sure you hit Clear All and hit Close. As you can see, we have a lot more in our cartridge list now. NIC, processes, SNMP, operating system, lots of good stuff. So we go back to the administration. Let that load. Remember, there's a lot, a lot of new data. The data model is being created around this. We go to hosts running agents. And remember, Foglight is already running an agent, and voila, we now have the option to deploy these packages. Let's go ahead and do that. Deploy OS package. We only have one option, so we've only installed one cartridge. And you notice the button has rendered incorrectly here. There are a few known glitches in the interface, and I'll say it again this interface isn't perfect, but it's better to have a GUI than not. This is being replaced with a newer, more metro-friendly interface. So your iPads, your Windows 8, your Android device style interfaces, just the classic Windows interface is going away. In the meantime, deal with these minor glitches, and there you go, now it came back. Quest is aware of these. They generally are not going to fix them, has been my experience. I've been reporting them for about two years, and they remain, so they're not going away because they're building a whole new platform. Why are they going to fix the existing one? I'm going to go ahead and hit deploy. And this is going to take about... My experience has been anywhere from 2 to 10 minutes, depending on how busy the machine is. Foglight can really only handle about two machines. Oh, that was very quick. I guess it's only one, one machine checking in. But Foglight can only handle about one machine checking in at a time, doing one configuration at a time. Really can't multi multitask very well. So if you have 100 machines, you can't do 100 at once. There's some tricks, but really can't. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice, now after deploying the package, remember I warned you about Foglight? You have to select this, then select this, then select this. We're now working from top to right to left. Very inefficient interface design. Anyway, does what it does. Create agent. Now we have lots of agent options. Now I really don't want to overwhelm you with agent right now. This could be very confusing. So let's just start with something really basic here. We're just going to do one agent. Let's monitor the network interface card on this host. That's all we're going to do for now. As you can see, there's a lot more going on, and we're going to do them all. But let's just focus on one thing. We need network interface data. Always select generate name. 
Foglight uses a, cons a consistent naming convention. That's going to save you a lot of effort when you have to script later. I very well could say amazing nick on my machine. That's just not helpful. I'll show you the name that Foglight gives it in a second. It's just way better. Nick create. And again, my experience is depends on how big the database is and how many machines are checking in. This can take a few minutes. Looks like we're already done on this virtual environment that we have set up. One host, you'd imagine it would be pretty quick, right? So I'm going to go back, and we're going to go agent statuses. And you may have noticed there's something in here. There wasn't something in here earlier. Oh, another way to get there is agent, agent status. Whatever works for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the sidebar away so we can make some room. And you can see the version of the agent is right here. There it is. And you notice the name, Nick on Foglight with the fully qualified domain name. Had I picked my own name, wouldn't be easy to find, but now I can easily just pop right up here, agent name, and search, knowing that it's always Nick on. We can do all kinds of wonderful things with searching on here. We can even apply, where did it go? Tags, we can tag our different selections. And where is the tag button right here? Doesn't look like this one has any tags. We'll come back to that later. We'll need more. Kind of silly to tag one thing anyway. But you'll notice there's no green dot here. It shows a green dot. Sort by active and non-active. Sort by collecting data. Sort by configuration. We're not going to go into this just yet. I'm just going to go ahead and hit activate. We'll hit OK. We're going to hit refresh. You'll notice initially, Foglight says it's broken. This is a known problem in Foglight for over three years. You can find forum posts on communities.quest.com going back since that site came up almost two years ago. For whatever reason, Quest has not fixed this. There is nothing wrong. Hit refresh again, and voila. You can see green it's working, green it's collecting data, and there's no configuration changes to worry about right now. Why they don't fix that, I don't know. Like it's the new UI coming out. Hopefully it'll be fixed then. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this to expand hosts. List hosts out. All hosts. All hosts. And we can see the fog lights. Docontoso.com we just installed. But still no network data is coming in. Didn't we just install the network monitor? Well, let's go in and take a closer look. That went to the wrong screen here, sorry. Well, there actually just is no data coming in yet. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to wait about 10 minutes to let it collect a few times. It's got to go out to the network interface, say, give me your current network utilization, give me your I.O., give me your runs, give me your overruns, everything like that. So we're just going to pause and we're going to come back to this. You know, it just occurred to me that I might have jumped over something very important. We're back here at Administration, Agents, Agent Status. This is where we see that agent working. I'm going to edit properties on that agent real quick, and I'm going to modify, and I'm going to edit properties for this agent only, this agent only, this agent only. Don't monitor for all, don't change for all, unless you really mean it. Right here you can see sample frequency, 300 seconds. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change that to 30 seconds. Now well, let's say one minute, 30 might be a little aggressive. The reason why that is, if we waited 300 seconds, it would take multiple collections for Foglight to complete. We wouldn't have a lot of data to work with. So I'm going to hit save, hit back, and I'm going to deactivate. Anytime you make a change to an agent, you actually do have to deactivate, reactivate for it. A little silly. Can take a couple minutes. Um, I've been kind of, well, there we go. Didn't take too long. More hosts, longer this takes, I imagine. And we're going to hit activate again. And again, there it is broken. I don't know how this gets past their quality control, but now it's working. So let's now wait a couple minutes and we'll get a lot more data. So we wait three or four minutes at 30 seconds each. We're going to have eight collections. We'll actually have a little bit of data to look at. Hey guys, so I'm back. Now I went ahead and changed the time up here. If I had changed the time to say one hour ago, you probably noticed the fog light server doesn't find anything. But if I change the time into the last hour, you notice it starts to see the data coming in because it's only started collecting in the last hour. Fog light can't go back in time. No monitoring system can. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to again click inside. You're going to see it doesn't actually find anything. That's because we really haven't set up a full host model for it yet. But we can actually go into 
data sources, I'm sorry, data, go into the host model, and find our host, and scroll down and we can start to see network data come in. I'm going to scroll in here and you can see there's all kinds of network information. Every object has alarms and things like that, but let's just go into what the interfaces themselves. Say the utilization. The latest utilization, almost negligible, 0% of the interface. Well, given a gigabit interface and we're not really doing anything, that makes sense. Let's see if we can get the raw transfer rate. And you can see the interface kind of bounces around. It's not exactly the most intuitive interface here, but it works, it works. So we're at transfer rate current. That's what we wanted. So that's been highlighted. And we can see we're running about 55k per second. This is the most recent collection. You can see fog lights kind enough to give you min, max, averages, sum, squares, and standard deviations. So you don't have to do the math. Another place you can sometimes look if it's support is in our operating system, Nix. You can go into here. And you notice the interface is selected for us by default. We could have selected if we had other options by clicking Agent Selector in the top right corner. A lot of times for no apparent reason you're going to have your selector here, but sometimes you'll have it dead on in the middle here, or sometimes you'll have to select from over here in a host list. It really can be kind of counterintuitive. Just be aware that it can bounce around and try and keep your eye out in these three areas. In this case, Agent Selector. I picked the nick on this one, and we can see the loopback, how, how many output packets, we can see the collisions would be displayed in orange if they existed. We can see errors with agents. There doesn't appear to be any. I.O. stats. Here we go. We actually can get the actual kilobytes per second. Nick overview with agent. And page stats. I'm sorry, packet status. So we're actually really getting some great data, but there's even more than is being displayed. So I'm going to show you real quick how we can get even more data. I'm going to click the Create Dashboard button. We're going to play a lot with this in the future. I'm going to hit Create Dashboard. And I'm just going to go ahead and say use all data and I'm just going to call this Nick Explore. The rest of this we're going to talk a lot about later and I'm just going to select a fixed size layout and I'm not going to overthink this just this moment. I'm going to cancel out of this interface because I don't like it. I'm going to collapse this down to give myself some real estate. In the top right corner I'm going to select the data tab which I think it should select by default but doesn't. We're going to go hosts and explore straight down to the host we were exploring. In this case, the Foglight server, its network, we have details and interfaces. So we have some great stuff in here. We could, we could actually start to graph data. So I drag and drop it over and select the visualization I think makes sense. I might want the receive rate in a spinner. Drag that over. And it's spinning. It shows the activity. If the collections ever stop, this stops spinning. We can actually put the traffic rate up. Let's go ahead and put it in one of these. So we can start to create amazing visualizations in just seconds. I can even overlay data. You notice initially I put the packets received. Well, I'll put the packets, packets sent on the same exact graph and they overlay together, although they overlapped each other in this case. We can explore in deeper and go into the individual interfaces. So you can get interface specific if your machine, say, has 10 or 12 NICs or bonded NICs. Now, bonded NICs, always just be aware when you're working with those because it can be a little funny. Utilization is a nearly pointless number in today's NICs, unless you're in a really high I.O. environment, which, okay, you might be. It's really going to be at zero or lower. You know something using that zoom function I told you guys to lab about? Less than 1%. When you're talking about gigabit, 10 gigabit, and we're running 40 gig interfaces now at my job, it can be a little trying. To get rid of these guys, go ahead and click BAM. I'm sorry. BAM. And remove. If you ever want to drag the screen back around, you need to click on General, Edit Page Layout, finish your layout, then hit Edit Page Layout again. So come inside here, and we'll just, we're just going to go ahead and add this to the assignment. Play around with Nick Agent Dashboarding. Create an overlay. Use each visualization. Rearrange. You don't get in there and do that you just you're just not getting comfortable this is how you make dashboards on the fly when something's down and you need data quick this is how you explore the model and get that data quickly I'm gonna go ahead and just point out there's more detailed information here sometimes you have to actually hit this show all information to get things to appear so I'm gonna hit show all and you notice that ridiculous additional information started to appear 
shows the IP addresses. We can actually trend it and see if the IP address ever changes. We can actually create a, anything you see in here. We can write logic in Java around it. So the IP address changes, the subnet changes, if the IP address changes to an odd number. You could do all anything you could imagine with regular expressions in Java. Very easy to do. So poke around in here, figure out what you can do with this. Definitely go in here and work this lab. So to close, this kind of summarizes this little section. We installed the cartridge, we pushed the agent, and we explored this model of how Foglight stores this data. You know, it's not very free flowing. It's very specific, very organized. So you really have to memorize this organization system. It's really hard to use their search function. It's not exactly the best search function I've ever seen. So poke around, please explore, get that Nick agent out there, even explore the other agents who feel the urge. We will talk a lot more about those as time goes on.